To understand how the credit loss models are built, we first need to understand what is credit loss. And to understand credit loss, we need to understand what is credit. Credit is a form of trust where the first party, called lender, provides money or resources to the second party, called borrower. The lender can be a financial institution, like a bank, and the borrower can be a consumer or a business. The loan can be provided in different ways. For example, it can be provided in the form of a mortgage or home loan, student loan, auto loans, credit card or HELOCs. The first three are installment loans, where the loan is given for a fixed period and the loan is repaid in the form of scheduled periodic payments, what we call as EMIs. The credit card and HELOCs are kind of revolving loans where the borrower has the flexibility to decide when to borrow, how much to borrow and the payments are open-ended. Whatever is paid is made available for borrowing again. Let's come back to the first question again. What is credit loss? Credit loss refers to the loss suffered by the lender that is the bank or the financial institution when the borrower fails to make the required payment. Credit losses are typically classified into two types. First one is contractual losses or charge-offs. Second is bankruptcy losses. And we will discuss both of these in more detail in upcoming videos. Charge-off is nothing but an accounting term. It is a declaration by the bank that a certain amount of loan is unlikely to be collected. Hence the loan is considered as a loss in bank's book. Federal regulations specify the exact number of days after which a debt should be recognized as loss. The number of days differ by different types of loan. For installment loans like mortgage, auto loans, a loan is considered as a loss if payment is not received for 120 days after the due date. In case of revolving loans like credit cards, the time window specified is 180 days. Let us try to understand this through an example. Say there is a customer who owns a credit card and because of some reason he is unable to make the payment on a scheduled due date. When that happens, the customer is said to be delinquent and he moves from current status or say bucket 0 to bucket 1. Bucket 1 specifies the first month after missing the payment that is 1 to 29 days past due date. Let's look at the balance. Say the outstanding balance on day 0 is $1000. Since the customer did not make any payment, interest and late fees will get accrued and the new balance at the end of month 1 is $1010. Here to keep things simple, we have made an assumption that $10 will be accrued as interest and fees charges every month. After a month, if customer is still unable to make any payment, he will move from bucket 1 to bucket 2, that is 30 to 59 days past due date. The balance will increase from 1010 to 1020 dollars. Until any payment is received, he will continue to roll forward to the next bucket after every month. If the customer is in bucket 6 and hits 180 days past due, the outstanding balance on the credit card is charged off. In our example, that is $1060 will be treated as a loss for the bank. This becomes part of gross contractual losses. Now we will discuss the bankruptcy losses. Bankruptcy losses result from consumers and firms who file for bankruptcy. If a borrower declares bankruptcy, the lender loses all rights to collect debt from the borrower without his or her consent. As a result, the lender has to realize the outstanding debt as a loss. Let's try to understand that from an example. Say there is a consumer who took an auto loan from the bank. Considering the payments made in the past, the remaining balance on the loan is $5,000 as of day zero. If the consumer declares bankruptcy on day zero and refuses to make any payments towards the loan, the bank has no option 
but to write off the entire balance and recognize it as a loss. This becomes part of the gross bankruptcy losses. So the total gross credit loss, which is also called GCL, is the sum of the contractual losses and the bankruptcy losses. Now let's understand what happens after an account charges off or goes, goes bankrupt. Let's take the charge off first. The account charges off after 180 days pass due and bank realizes the outstanding balance has lost. However, even after the charge off, bank tries to collect the debt from consumers and mitigate as much losses as possible. This process is called recoveries. In case bank uses external vendors for recoveries, bank has to pay a certain commission to agencies for every dollar that is collected. After a certain number of years, typically 6-7 years, if the bank is still not able to collect the debt, bank sells the loan to third party agencies. This process is called asset sales. In case of bankruptcy write-off, since the bank does not have right to collect on those accounts and many of the, those accounts have very limited ability to make payments, bank immediately sell those accounts. So then what is the final loss to the bank? The final loss to the bank, also re referred to as net credit loss, is equal to gross credit loss minus any asset sales and recoveries. Let's understand some common terms used in credit risk. Roll rate refers to the movement of account across different delinquency buckets. For example, bucket 1 to bucket 2 roll rate specifies the proportion of account moving from bucket 1 to bucket 2 in the next one month. PD refers to probability of default. Default is an event when the account is either contractually charged off or written off due to bankruptcy. PD is defined over a certain time horizon. For example, if 12 months PD is 10%, that implies that the account has 10% likelihood to charge off or go bankrupt within the next 12 months. Next is EAD. EAD refers to exposure at default. As the name indicates, it is the exposure bank has when the borrower default. In simple terms, it is equal to the outstanding balance at the time of charge off or bankruptcy. LGD refers to loss given default. LGD is directly linked to recoveries and asset sales. It is percentage of exposure at the time of default that is eventually lost by the bank. GCL is the gross credit loss and it is expressed as the product of PD and EAD. NCL is net credit loss. It can be expressed as the product of PD, EAD and LGD or it can also be represented as GCL minus recoveries minus asset sales. Let's understand through an example how these terms are defined at an account level and at an aggregate level. First look at the account level calculation. You will try to estimate expected loss in one year. Say there is an account at t equals to zero with balance of thousand dollars. Based on an analysis, we predicted that there is a 10% chance that the account might default within next one year. Hence, the probability of default is equal to 10%. Based on a similar analysis, we estimate that in case the account defaults, the balance would increase to $1,500. So, the EAD would be $1,500. Finally, let's say that the bank will be able to recover $300 out of these 1500 from the consumer in case of the default which means the bank will eventually lose $1200 hence the LGD is equal to 1200 by 1500 which is equal to 80% expected GCL in next one year for this account is equal to PD multiplied by EAD which is equal to $150 an expected NCL, which is the product of PD, EAD and LGD, is equal to $120. Now let's aggregate it and calculate losses in a particular month M. Say the total balance of all accounts in month M-1 is equal to $100,000. In month M, the number of accounts charged off is equal to 50. 
and the charge of balance is equal to $2,000. Number of bankruptcies is equal to 10. And the bankruptcy loss to the bank is $1,000. So the total GCL, the sum of contractual charge offs and bankruptcy losses is equal to $3,000 and total recoveries and assist sales in month, M, in month M is equal to $200. So the total NCL is equal to $3,000 minus $200 for recoveries and asset sales which is equal to $2,800. In percentage terms, the GCL rate is equal to 3% which is 3000 divided by 100,000 and the NCL rate which is 2.8,000 by 100,000 is equal to 2.8 percentage. There are a lot of approaches which can be used to predict credit loss. Here we will talk about some very common approaches. The most basic approach is to predict GCL rate or NCL rate at a portfolio or a segment level. Once we have the prediction, it can be multiplied by balance forecast to get GCL dollar or NCL dollar. We can use simple time series mod modeling to predict these rates. Another commonly used technique is to, is to predict roll rates for different buckets. For example, bucket 0 to bucket 1, bucket 1 to bucket 2, bucket 2 to bucket 3 and so on using historically available data. Once we know the expected roll rates in future, the charge of balance can be obtained by multiplying balance forecast with respective roll rates. For example, the charge of balance in next month can be obtained by multiplying the current bucket 6 balance with bucket 6 to charge of roll rate for next month. Similarly, to get charge of balance after 3 months, balance in bucket 4 as of today can be multiplied by bucket 4 to bucket 5 then bucket 5 to bucket 6 and then bucket 6 to charge off roll rate to get the balance which will charge off after 3 months. Finally, the most commonly used technique is to predict individual components of losses which is PD, EAD and LGD. These components can be forecasted at an account level using very sophisticated methodologies. Thank you and hope you find it useful.